I produced a tutorial about a year ago on how to set up your audio interface within Studio One, but some things have changed since that time, so here's an updated tutorial to help you learn all of the specifics of the audio device settings within the software. To start, we can access the Audio Setup tab by going to Studio One, Options, Audio Setup, and selecting the Audio Device tab. If you're on the Mac, go to Preferences, Audio Setup, and audio device. Alternatively, if we close out here, we can just use the shortcut keys control plus comma on the PC or command plus comma on the Mac. When you initially launch Studio One, it will automatically choose an audio device, but we can change that at any time and from that point on, it will return to that device as long as it's connected to your computer and available. To select an audio device, simply click the drop down arrow on the drop down menu next to the audio device and make a selection from the available options. For the moment, I'll choose my Focusrite Scarlet Solo. If you're on the Mac, you will have two separate drop down menus for choosing your playback device and recording device. Once we've chosen our device, most will have additional settings that we can access by clicking the control panel button just to the right. At a bare minimum, you'll most likely be able to adjust your sample rate and buffer size here. If your audio device supports higher sample rates than what is shown here, and you're unable to change it within the control panel or audio device menu, like me, you can always go to your song page, click the sample rate in the transport bar, and make the change there. We can also adjust the resolution or bit depth of our song here. Now there's a lot of debate about which sample rate and bit depth to use, so I won't go into that, but just keep in mind that higher sample rates will increase your CPU load and higher bit depths will increase your file size. I will typically record most of my songs at 24 bit, 48 kilohertz, or 32 bit float, 48 kilohertz. Coming back to our audio device tab, we can see that we have an area for adjusting our device block size, which is the same as our buffer size that we saw within the control panel a moment ago. And this is essentially going to determine the amount of delay that we have from the time our audio is going in and back out to our monitoring system, i.e. our speakers or headphones. We can click the drop down menu to choose a value or we can move the slider. If you're planning on recording audio or MIDI performance, ideally we'd want to set this to 128 or lower. If you have a slower processor like myself, you might be able to get away with 256. Just know that the lower you set your buffer or block size, the more load will be placed on your CPU, and this just may introduce clicks, pops, or instability within your system. If you have a slower processor, you could always lower your block size while recording and use a minimal amount of VSTs and effects. Then, once your tracking is done, raise the buffer size to free up processing power for arranging, processing, and mixing. Below our device block size, we have a display for sample rate, bit depth, and input and output latencies. We also have a checkbox for choosing to release audio device in background. You would want to check this box if you would like other applications to have access to your audio device that you're using while you are also running Studio One. Now, if Studio One is using an external hardware interface and your PC or laptop is set up to use its own built-in audio, however, this shouldn't be a problem, you know, it shouldn't be a concern and you can leave this unchecked. Moving on, we now have a new tab called Processing. The Processing tab introduces several new features that have been introduced to Studio One that will allow us to have the best of both worlds, a lower buffer setting while recording audio or MIDI, but a higher buffer setting while playing back. These processes can now be handled discreetly by Studio One. And this is taken care of for us in the background, so we don't have to constantly access the audio device menu to make adjustments while we're working. Our first setting, Dropout Protection, is how we can activate this feature. On its default setting of minimum, our process block size is going to match our device block size even with a setting of low, these will match. But once we move this up to medium, you can see that the process block size has changed to 512 samples, but our device block size still remains at 256. At a high setting, we have 1024 samples, and at maximum, we have 2048 samples, and our device block size still remains at 256. 
So what this means is that while you are recording, you will have that 256 buffer size, but once you go back to playback and working with effects in your song, it will move to the process buffer size of 2048. Now, there are a couple other things to take note of when we are working with the dropout protection. At the minimum and low settings, we're not able to access the Enable Low Latency Monitoring for Instruments checkbox. But once we move to medium or above, we do have access to that. We also have a couple of green colored Zs that pop up to the right of the audio round trip and instrument fields, which we'll cover in a second. Enable low latency monitoring for instruments basically allows us to apply low latency mon monitoring to VST instruments along with any effects plugins that we may be using on any audio channels set up for recording and monitoring. Keep in mind that inserted plugins that introduce more than three milliseconds of latency are not audible on any channel that is armed for recording or monitoring. These are temporarily disabled plugins and will return to normal function once the track has been record and monitor disarmed. There are also several other plugin devices that cannot take advantage of the low latency monitoring, and these include analyzer plugins, effects chains that make up or that make use of splitter devices and external effects that make use of pipeline. When we use dropout protection within our songs, there are several areas to pay attention to within the console. You will see that we have a Z icon at several locations within our console, one on the master out channel, one in our instrument panel within the console, and a third on our individual VST instruments. We can click these icons to temporarily disable low latency monitoring for an individual instrument, noting that when deactivated, the instrument's power button turns blue, and when it is active, the power button is green. This just shows us which VST instruments uh, are taking advantage of the low latency monitoring. Within the instrument panel of the console, we can click the icon to disable the feature on all VSTs at once. Now the Z icon on the master channel will disable the feature for all effects plugins. Notice that the effects plugins power buttons will be blue or green to indicate whether it's running in low latency mode. And so this is where the two green colored Z's come into play that we see in the audio device processes tab. These simply let us know that we can now make use of low latency monitoring on our VST instruments and or audio channel effects. We're also provided with a display of audio round trip and instrument latency times to the left of the uh, Z icons. The last item to cover in the processes tab is the ability to take advantage of or not any low latency hardware monitoring or effects that we may have on our audio interface. Mine does not have these capabilities, so that's why this is grayed out. But if you do have an interface with these capabilities, but would prefer to use the native low latency monitoring within Studio One, this is the box that you would then need to check. And we also have a drop down menu for selecting um, our process precision, whether we would like to stick with the default setting of single 32 bit, or we can raise that up to double at 64 bit. The latter can increase CPU usage, but should give you cleaner audio processing, though whether you'll be able to hear the difference between the two is debatable and not a topic I'll go into in this video. And the very last thing that I would like to touch on is for anyone who may not have an audio interface and you're limited to the built-in audio on a Windows PC. Now, if I change my audio device to Windows Audio and then open up the control panel, notice that we have exclusive mode available. And now checking this will allow you to have a bit better latency, though you will, you will lose audio to other applications while you're using Studio One. So if you were wanting to watch tutorials on YouTube while using Studio One, say some Quana tutorials, uh, you're not going to be able to do that when you have this check and you're using the built-in audio card of your Windows PC. But if you'd like a bit better performance, you do have this option available to you. Also, if you've been trying to use your built-in Windows but have been having problems with not getting any sound, it's important that you make sure the bit depth and sample rate match between Studio One and your Windows audio properties. We can access that by clicking Manage Audio Devices in the bottom left corner. 
select your audio device in the following window under the playback tab and then choose properties. You'll then want to select the advanced tab and make your adjustments here. You can even record audio when using your built-in audio card, but here you also need to be sure that you've properly set the bit depth and sample rate. So while we're still in the Windows Auto Audio Properties, we can select the Recording tab, choose the correct microphone, and select Properties. Now within the Advanced tab is where we can then choose the proper settings to make it talk to Studio One. And this wraps up our tutorial on working with your audio device and setting that up within Studio One 3.5. I hope if you've been having any issues, this clears things up. If you still continue to have problems or have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Take care.